It's me, Bree Reads! Hi friends, it's me, Bree. Today, let's read a story together. The Bread Pet, a sourdough story. The Bread Pet, written by Kate De Palma. Illustrated by Nelika Veruf. It seemed like I'd been waiting forever for my uncle to visit again. Mom! Mama! I shouted. Look! They waved to JB's rusty camper as it stopped. I ran to greet him. Hey, Butterbean! He said. Thought I'd stop in on my way out west. Could you look after something for me while I'm gone? Of course, I said. You know I love your goldfish. Not just Poquito, he replied. Cora, meet my bread pet, said JB. It's sourdough made with bacteria and fungi growing inside it. Gross, I backed away. Gross and awesome exclaimed JB. Bacteria and fungi are alive. They eat the dough and change it. The fungi make it rise up light and fluffy. The bacteria give it a nice sour taste. I took a closer look at the goo. So it's really alive? JB showed me how to stir water and flour into the bread pet to feed it. It's called starter because you can use it to start a new loaf of sourdough bread, he explained. Until you're ready to bake, keep feeding it. It gets hungry twice a day. JB gave me a note with instructions, then frowned. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to tell you, he said. I shrugged. Seems pretty easy. Feeding the bread pet turned out to be a lot of work. I had to measure the sticky bread pet and the flour and the water, making sure I had the amounts right and trying not to make a mess. The first day, I tried to give the job to someone else. Mom said, no way. Mama just laughed. None of us knew how soon things would get out of control. It only took a couple of days for the bread pet to outgrow the biggest mixing bowl in the house. Mom suggested we move it to a bucket. Mama split it into two containers, and then four, and then eight. We had flour in our hair, and bread pets oozing all over the kitchen. How did the bread pet grow so quickly? If one bowl turns into two bowls, then <gasps> I started drawing. I couldn't even write the next line without running off the page. I tried to imagine what the kitchen was going to look like in a few days. I gulped. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Why does JB even keep this stupid bread pet? I grumbled to myself. Mom stuck her head in the doorway. He keeps it so he can bake bread, silly. Didn't you see the recipe on the back? She waved JB's crumpled note at me. Do you think JB would mind if we baked some? I asked. No, Mom said laughing. I think he'd like that. So that's what we did. The first loaf was a little flat. But Mom said we'd get better at it with time. Baking some of the bread pet didn't solve our problem. It was growing faster than we could bake. I'm sick of all this mess, said Mama after a few days. I'm sick of all this bread, I replied. You know, said Mom, we might be sick of this bread, but there are a lot of people who would be thankful to have something like this to eat. That gave me an idea. I asked Mom if she'd help me bake one more loaf to share. It turned out perfectly, golden and puffy, with a heavenly smell. 
we sliced it carefully and wrapped it up before we walked together to the community hall. The smell followed us up the road. Our community hall was a busy swirl of people and sounds and food. The director, Toya, thanked us for our donation, and I watched my bread move through the room. It was passed around the tables of people, and just like that, it was gone. Are you okay, sweetie? Toya asked. I poked around in my brain for the right words. I just didn't think it would be gone so fast. When we got home, I went straight into the kitchen. There were even more bowls of oozy goo than I remembered. Ah, Paquito, I'm only one person. I can't bake all this bread myself. Poquito opened and closed his little circle mouth, and the bread pet just bubbled. All of the bread pets just bubbled. That gave me another idea. I thought of something else we can try, I said. It took Mama, Mum, and me all working together to load my wagon up with our gooey jars and containers. They rattled all the way to the community hall. Toya looked a little surprised to see us. Cora, she said, you're back. The next day, the cafeteria at the community hall was full. Toya and I taught everyone about bread pets and how to care for them. And of course, how to bake the bread. Toya even knew some things I didn't, like that bread pets grow much more slowly if you keep them in the fridge. I wish I'd known that sooner. Toya asked if anyone had a question for us. At the back of the class, someone raised their hand. Hey, Butterbean, said a familiar voice. Oh, did I forget to tell you to put it in the fridge? Oh, <laughs> the end. Thank you for reading with me today. Friends, you can follow the link in the description to purchase your own copy of this story. I was inspired to make a bread pet of my very own, and you can too. You can keep feeding it, then share it with your family, friends, or even with your community, like our friend in this story. The recipe is on my website, linked below. If you make a bread pet, I want to see. You can find and tag me on Instagram. And please subscribe to my channel for more books.